In today's episode, Lisa asks, what are the biggest mistakes you're seeing in email marketing? Uh, email marketing. I have uh, such a fondness for email marketing. It is one of my favorite channels to use because it is so effective. Decades after all these other channels have come and gone and social media has changed so much, email marketing is still a delightful constant. And if it's not part of your marketing mix, I would suggest that you make it part of your marketing mix as soon as possible. Because email marketing is the only channel of outbound communication that you have control over. Yes, there are algorithms that block spam and things like that. But once you uh, do the basics for fixing that sort of thing, then email gets to people. You put something on Facebook, no guarantee that more than a handful of people are going to see it. Uh, the other channel that is reasonably guaranteed is advertising. And even that... Uh, I was in a group the other day and someone was saying, hey, Facebook is taking money from our budget, but we're not seeing our ads and they're not showing up in impressions. Like, great, so Facebook's just taking your money now. So email marketing is uh, is, is the beloved constant of marketers uh, who, who, who are in it for the long haul. The big mistakes that I see in email marketing uh, that marketers are doing wrong all fit in the 1968 framework from Bob Stone, who was a direct marketer at the time, one of the best uh, in that era. And his framework was called uh, LOC, List Offer Creative. The three ingredients you need to make any kind of outbound communication uh, work well for you. Now, email marketing can be split into sort of three different categories. There is uh, direct selling, right? Just sending offers to people. There is nurture email marketing where you're doing drip marketing to somebody to try and get them to buy. And then there is the email newsletter, which is a form of communication. It Depending on what kind of email marketing you're doing will depend on, on how you apply Bob Stone's strategy. But the concepts are still the same. On list, do you have the right list? How much effort do you put into getting the right people on your list? You can't buy lists anymore. Well, you, well, you, technically, you can, but um, it is illegal in a lot of places. It is illegal under GDPR now. So you can't buy a list for the most part. You probably shouldn't. Uh, and are the right people on your list? There are dozens and dozens and dozens of ways to build your email list. In fact, I wrote a book years ago called 52 Ways to Grow Your Email List. Uh, maybe... Uh, because it's been out of print for a really long time and it's very out of date. Uh, maybe I'll refresh that. Um, if you would be interested in that, come on over to the Analytics for Marketers Slack and leave a comment. Uh, go to trustinsights.ai slash analytics for marketers. And, and let me know if you'd, you'd want to see an updated version of that book. So list, super important. Are the right people on it? The offer, when you do sell. And so with those three types of email marketing, the, the direct response just grab them by the tie and choke them till they buy, um, the nurture, and then the email newsletter. When you do sell, are you selling what people on your list want to buy? Is the offer congruent with who your audience is? And this requires you to do real research on your email list. Who are the people on your list? What are the industries? What are their uh, demographics? What are their psychographics? What are their firmographics? All of these things are part of understanding your list. Uh, there are some great services that will help you for ex exceptionally large amounts of money um, do analysis based on the email addresses on your list. But the easiest way to understand who's on your list and what they want to buy is to run a survey, to email people on your list and ask them, hey, what are the things that you care about? What are the things that are, are prominent problems in your world? And so on and so forth. Um, uh, uh, I try and do this like once a quarter. What do the people care about? And then you match your offers to what people say they want, right? It's it's pretty straightforward stuff. If you want to be successful with email marketing, give people what they want. The third is the creative. And this is what is the content? What content are you putting in front of your list? Is it, again, is it what they want? And again, if the easiest way to determine that is to ask people, what do you want? And you can ask them a couple of different ways. Number one, when someone signs up on the list, is that in the autoresponder? Is a great opportunity to ask them, you know, while they're still fresh, hey, what do you want to hear about? Um, the other thing that people don't do with email marketing is they don't treat it as a one-to-one -one social network. And this shows up in two different ways. Number one, 
don't ever send from do not reply at whatever your domain is, right? Send it from a person, ideally you. If you're the marketer, be proud to put your name on your email communications. And if you're not, that's a good sign that your email is not very good and you need to improve it. When I send my newsletter, when I send the Trust Insights newsletter, I put my name and my email address on the reply and I read and reply to them because that's how you build a, a, a functional list. That's how you build a community by being there for them and, and talking to the people who respond to you. Number two, uh, the second way this shows up is uh, in the way you communicate with somebody. In the same way that we do it here <clears throat> with video and with audio and things like that, generally speaking, People do not re read email in an audience, right? Generally speaking, it is a one-to-one -one communication. So write your email as though you are writing to one other person. So, for example, I don't start my videos and I don't start my emails with, hey, guys, or hey, folks, or hey, everybody, right? It's just you and me, right? you, I, 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 unless like somebody else is sitting right next to you watching this video with you. Uh, chances are it's probably just you and me watching, the, it, you know, communicating with each other, right? And so the same thing is true with email. Uh, Anne Hanley says this all the time in, in her uh, email marketing tips, which is write specifically to one person. Warren Buffett, the example she cites is that Warren Buffett writes his annual report to his sister Doris because she's an investor. And he communicates as though he was writing a letter to his sister. Do the same thing with your email communications. Change from, hey, everybody, to, hey, Bob, hey, Doris, hey, Katie, this is an email for you, to you, and I want it to give you value, right? So that's, that is probably uh, the most important thing when it comes to the creative. Would you send that email to a, a loved one, right? If you wouldn't send it to a loved one, don't send it to your list, right? So if you're just like, oh, I'm going to send this this you know, hard sell pitch uh, by now, time time limited. If time really is limited, cool. Then you know, be honest and, and do that. But it is the creative. Now, here's the thing that uh, another mistake in this meta framework of list offer creative: the investment of time and resources should be proportional to the importance of each category. List is the most important. Fifty percent of your time should be on building the right list. Fifty percent of your budget, etc. You know, maybe 25% of your time is on offer and then 25% is on creative. But build if you don't have the right people on the list, nothing else will matter in terms of the impact of your email marketing. So make sure that you invest your time and resources into building that list well with the right people. If you're going to spend money, spend the money there. You've seen... if I hope you're subscribed to my email newsletter. If you're not, there'll be a link at the end of the video. The design is nothing to write home about. Right? It's just a plain text email for the most part with a few header graphics. That's it. Because I would rather spend my time and, and my few dollars I have to invest on getting the right list rather than making a fancy creative that if it's the wrong list, no one's going to read it. So those are the top mistakes. And we could go on for a real long time about all the different ways you can do email marketing. I did it for years professionally. Um, but... Great question, Lisa. Important question. Make sure you get list offer creative right and invest the resources proportionally. As always, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems? Visit trustinsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.